Hello, everyone. Welcome to the return of the book club. I'm trying to get my audio fixed. There it goes. Okay, that should be good. So, welcome back to DCAU Book Club. For those of you who have uh, done this with us before, we, we've we gone over like the, the Justice League Wings of War and Justice League Golden Opportunity and the Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero novelization. Today, we are starting Batman Rise of Sinzu. Oh, where's it? There it is. Batman Rise of Sinzu. Um, the novel based on the 2003 video game. Um, from what I understand, they thought this video game was going to be a very big deal. And it didn't do as well as they were hoping it would. Uh, but they did, you know, the novel tie-in, a sequel comic, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's going to be fun to, you know, get into the novel, try to, to get the deeper story of everything that's not necessarily on the video game disc itself. Um, so we'll be reading the first two chapters, doing notes and everything. Uh, we're streaming right now to both Twitch and YouTube, but it's just going to be this episode for YouTube. Everything after this is going to be coming over to Twitch. So if you're on the YouTube right now, Come on over to the Twitch anyway. That way, you know, you get the notifications. You don't miss out on things. Um, because YouTube is penalizing us for, like, having long-form content that doesn't do as well as our other content. So, rather than do that, we figured, hey, let's, you know, diversify. Let's bring it over to Twitch. Um, the, the, only, the only live chat that I'm going to be able to interact with is the Twitch chat. That's just the, the way that our setup is right now. So if you're on YouTube, you want to, you know, take part in the, the live aspect of this, be part of the chat and everything, just come on over, come on over to Twitch. Just bring it on over. Um, but since I don't have scans of this book like I have of other books before, I'm just going to have in the background our, uh, our Batman Rise of Sinzu playthrough going. Like I said, we're going to do the first two chapters. There's a prologue as well. So let me hit the play button on that and then we can jump into the book itself um the book was written by where does it say devin grayson and flint dill delay maybe um i think flint uh was the person who wrote the the um the game story and devin grayson is the one who you know beefed it up for this book uh oh den danny shady 2x now how y'all how you guys going how, how, how are y'all doing? Uh, back of the book says, Expanding on the story of the exciting new video game by Ubisoft, this novel features Batman in his most dangerous adventure yet. Thrilling and action-packed, it presents a milestone in the legend of the Dark Knight, the introduction of a powerful criminal mastermind who vows to unleash a murderous force that will destroy Gotham City and its sworn protector. In big capitalized letters, DEATH IN GOTHAM! For millennia, the immortal Sinzu has reveled in the joy of death as he enslaved kingdoms and reduced nations to wastelands. A master of mystic powers who can control thousands of minds, Sinzu is virtually all-knowing and all-powerful. Now, after many years of hunting, the evil genius has finally found a worthy opponent. Batman. Declaring war on the Dark Knight... Hey, thanks for uh thanks for following. Um let's see. Where was I? Declaring war on the Dark Knight, Sinzu gathers three of Batman's deadliest foes, Bane, Clayface, and the Scarecrow, to be his generals. Their troops are thousands of Gotham's most heinous murderers and maniacs, freed from Stonegate Prison and Arkham Asylum. Wreaking havoc alongside ninjas and invulnerable animated statues, these villains will force Batman to battle wave after wave of hellish mayhem. And if the Dark Knight survives long enough to find Sin Tzu, only then will the real war for Gotham begin. You haven't missed anything yet, Niall. We, uh, we're, we're just starting the book. Let's see. Oh, on the inside, there's a, they, they give us like little character stuff. Uh, let's see. Shadow and Flame. The image of Batman's mask... 
Yeah. The image of Batman's masked face flickers and then breaks down into visual static, replaced by what must be Sin Tzu's countenance, a frightening mask of mutable gold accented with a red and black yin and yang symbol on his forehead. There's something at once mesmerizing and threatening about him, like a beautifully colored poisonous snake you don't dare take your eyes from. The battle is fully joined, albeit its outcome is a certainty. First rule of war, Sinzu, Batman answers calmly. There are no certainties. I guess that's a that must be just an excerpt from the, the book. Uh, but then it tells you about the characters. We've got the Marauders, the Scarecrow. He controls fear itself and can leave the strongest opponent, ev even Batman, paralyzed with abject, uncontrollable fear. Clayface, the villain can transform his mutated body into nearly anyone or anything, including new weapons and attacks that Batman has never before encountered. Bane, brilliant, impossibly strong, and inhumanly cruel. He is a one-man mercenary apocalypse with venom coursing through his veins. And then we have the Defenders. Nightwing, Dick Grayson's all grown up and still doing what he does best guarding batman's back robin batman's current protege tim drake is a tough kid with an uncanny understanding of gotham's mean streets and batgirl barbara gordon is the wild card a seasoned fighter with unique skills and instincts join the dark knight's war to save gotham city with non-stop action and a thrilling adventure based on the exciting new video game from ubisoft batman the rise of sin Tzu. uh and then we've got uh, the dedications from Devin Grayson. This book is dedicated to Alyssa. And from Flint DeLay, to my son Zane, who taught me to believe in superheroes again and provided a lot of ideas. I love this already. Um, looking at the chapter list, the chapters are broken down with like time codes of when they happened overnight. So we've got like the Sinzu prologue happens at 11.27 p.m. Chapter 1 happens at 11.42 p.m. Chapter 2 at 11.59, etc., etc., etc. So that's going to be fun for, for timeline clues and everything like that. Um, let me see. Before actually hopping into the prologue, what's going on in the chat? Uh, let's see. This is better than the last time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, that's Jacob. Hey, Jacob. I, I don't know if you mean this is better than the, the setup we used to have for uh, Book Club or if this is better than when James was on the other day, but I'll agree with both of them just because I'm better than James and we all know it. Um, he wrote G.I. Joe TV series. Who wrote the G.I. Joe? The, the Flint uh, Delay guy? Interesting. Uh, let's see. Den is getting a Pop-Tart. That's good. Transformers. Devin Grayson did some great Titan stuff and a really fun Arsenal miniseries. I trust her to make this work. Okay, awesome. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for following us. Uh, who was that? T T Goddamn Batman has followed. All right, awesome. Thanks for thanks for coming along. So let's uh, let's go ahead and hop into the book. Um, in between chapters and everything, what we'll be doing. If you've been here for book club before, we use these as a way to uh, kind of take notes on things. Oh, that's a really long prologue. That's 15 pages. Uh, we use we use this as a way to take notes on things for like timeline videos, can it will it canon videos, all that kind of fun stuff. So, in between chapters, I'll be hopping over to my spreadsheet where we keep our notes and everything, uh, and you'll get to you'll get to be part of the the note taking. Uh, but yeah, let's hop into the prologue. It's 15 pages long, so let's just do it. Prologue. Sin Tzu, 11.27 p.m. At this moment, the conqueror of Gotham City sits cross-legged behind the bars of a cell marked Sin Tzu. Though no one will realize this for many hours, my strike will begin precisely at midnight. As I wait out the final half hour, I remember words I wrote long ago. The great commander will always seize the highest ground, whether on the battlefield or whether in his mind. He must always see the battle as a vulture would see it, from high above, watching for the place of death, knowing that death spreads from death as fire spreads from fire. If one were to look down upon the streets of Gotham, at first glance one would hardly see what could make this grim, dark metropolis a more desirable battlefield than any other modern American city. Its architectural, 
Its architectural cacophony of skyscrapers, office buildings, apartments, parking lots, shopping malls, and bodegas is not unusual, particularly in the daylight hours. But at night, the darkness has an uncanny depth, which I admit makes Gotham City particularly intoxicating. But that in and of itself is not uniquely attractive to me. So I guess I guess I guess the chapters are told in like a first person thing. Um, I don't have a Sinzu voice, or else I'd be doing it. I don't I don't know what he sounds like. I haven't gotten that far in the game. Um, so we're just winging it with my normal voice. No, the allure of Gotham is in its defender. After dark, the citizens of Gotham brace themselves with stories of a bat-winged guardian hostile to the night's predators. A man so ultimately trained in mind and body as to be the perfect combatant, the perfect warrior, the perfect opponent. This city lives under his shadow. Do you see? Hiding like a cancer just to the left of the city's heart, the stunted and craggy mansion jutting out from beyond the sewage treatment plant. Do you notice the gothic stonework? Its crooked towers, a mixture of rotting Victoriana and shining modern glass rising above the soggy excuse for land called Mercer Mercy Island. This is Arkham Asylum, home for the criminally insane, a once abandoned mansion as fragmented in design as the minds of the lunatics it houses. Come inside its narrow, sloping stairwells and hear the shrieks and grunts of its inmates, their screams, whispers, maniacal laughing, and demoralized sobbing. Choke on the smell of damp mold that never dries. Hear the incessant echo of a leak that no one can ever find to fix, and the scuttling scrape of rats racing for shelter along mildewed baseboards. Now open some doors, their paint cracking and their hinges loose. One reveals, covered with dirt and cobwebs, a torture chamber fit for the Inquisition. Behind the next, a gleaming, sterile room stocked with the best of modern pharmaceuticals. Past a third, a brick-halted hallway now mysteriously bereft of some forgotten purpose. Somewhere along the way, the layout of Arkham became a labyrinth or a labyrinthian mystery. Its clean, modern rooms were grafted far too quickly onto the rotting foundations of the old Mercy Mansion. And as with all botched operations, gangrene has set in. Suppose one were now to take a tour of the official Arkham, the part that pretends to be modern science. And suppose one were to take the appropriate turns past the therapy rooms, past the exercise yard, past the guards' gated lockers. Sooner or later, if one had the appropriate keys, one would enter the wing where Arkham Asylum's most famous and most lethal criminals reside, the rogues' gallery. Past the divided man, the plant woman, the spindly creature who marks his kills upon his own body. Oh shit, so Victor Zaz is canon. Oh, that's awesome. Past the grunting thing, the crying thing, the thing too disgusted with itself to utter a sound. Past the crocodile and the man of ice and the puppet keeper. Sooner or later, one would come to me. I sit in darkness. It's chilly in my cell, or rather would be, should I let myself feel the cold. The latest tray of untouched slop lies before the door. I have not eaten in two days. My guard has notified the dietitian and the government worker assigned to my case. They are worried that I am on a hunger strike. Perhaps I overestimated the American intelligence agent in assuming he would realize how beneath my purpose such a sad protest would be. After mere months of study, he thinks he begins to understand me. This is amusing. The conceits of children always are. They know nothing, nothing of me and nothing of meditation. Denial of self is pathetic. Nevertheless, way to do battle. Or, n not nevertheless. Denial of self is a pathetic, nerveless way to do battle. I have nothing to protest. My mind is set on conquest. Down the hall, a madman cackles loudly at his own joke. Another voice is raised, and in honeyed tones, tells him to shut up. 
A third voice promises exquisite torture to them both. From far down the corridor, a man blurts a riddle to no one in particular. I hear him without effort, despite the distance, much as I hear the scuttle of the roaches on the hospital's kit on the hospital kitchen's greasy flagstones, and the steady flip of a coin along with muttered curses from the disfigured madman in a cell three doors down. The range of the senses is merely a question of concentration. The man repeats his riddle in desperate glee. Sometimes others give him an answer. Mostly, they do not, despite the childlike ease of the clues he gives them. Eventually, he will reveal the answer to his non-existent audience and snicker with delight over his own cleverness. Many times, I am able to solve the riddles without effort, despite the fact that they usually involve puns in English, a language that is not my first. But I rarely answer them out loud. There is no need to encourage him. More importantly, the discipline of holding knowledge close is of legendary value. A fool brags about what he knows. A wise man makes others guess. The riddle is chanted a third time. How can you have four hands? The answer is disappointingly plain. By doubling your fists. Not by borrowing your cellmates, as another inmate crudely replies. But no matter... It's time for these simple games. That's a typo. Oh, no. The time for these simple games has ended. Not its time. The time. The great game is just moments from beginning. The ultimate game. The game of war. Focusing, I deafen myself to the riddling man and his abusive captive audience. I remove them from my consciousness, breaking language down to its component sounds, and then expunging these from my thoughts. I must, now, I must not be distracted. No outside contaminants may enter me now. The night is rising. My night. It's time to set the wheels in motion. I sink into myself, drawing energy from without, like a black hole, sucking it in. Processing it, storing it, amplifying it, focusing it. The power of Yanjin alchemy is a very old one. Ancient, unstoppable, and all but forgotten. Energy flows from the physical world to the world of the mind and out again in deadly force. There is nothing in this world or the next that cannot feed the mind and that the mind cannot in turn control or destroy. As with most divine mysteries, these principles are shared today only in harmless, neutered form. Those meditative religions, which come closest to keeping the truths alive, have all but buried their rightful meaning under the ludicrously irrelevant concept of compassion. For example, there is a practice yet taught of the meditative art of sending and taking. In very simple terms, one breathes in all the negativity of the world. All the pain, hate, suffering, and despair, and breathes out hope and light and, yes, compassion. Today, many mistake this practice as an exercise in the development of courage and a fearless heart. Nonsense. It is an exercise in power. Instructions on how to tap into a battery, a well of energy that is never depleted. As long as there is consciousness, there will be hate, jealousy, fear. Compassion is what masters teach their slaves to feel for their oppressor, oppressors. Turn the other cheek. Hey, thanks for following. Turn the other cheek. Carry it the extra mile. Bah! It is a weakness, a liability, and is clearly indicated by the instructions to breathe it out and dispel it. I made this point to a so-called master of the meditative arts. I camped with one in Shulan. He tried to convince me that all of humanity, indeed all of life, is one that to love yourself, hold on, that all of life is one, that to love yourself is to love all others, and that to harm any other is to harm yourself. As he was making rice for us later that night over a low fire, I sat forward and slit his throat with a rock. Now I have two bowls of rice, I told him. How am I harmed by harming you? It is obvious that my situation has improved. He prayed for me with his last gurgling breath. Pitiable. 
I'd expected more from a philosophy that has, as its first noble truth, life is suffering. Now I move past that suffering into a vortex of strength. The shadows of the solid world recede. The inner light, the pure light of Metasua, expands to fill my inner eyes. The spirit voices chant their approval. I inhale the scents of the asylum. Sweet sweat, chlorine, the exotic flowery aroma of rare orchids that emanates from the cell of the plant woman. This last is a threat. It charms tempting... It charms tempting me back to the humid jungle campaigns of my youth. It reminds me of my young innocence, when assassination with my bare hands was an exhilarating process. Then, the kills still had the spice of doubt. I was new to the Metasua. I had not yet fully mastered the channeling of mental and physical energy into deadly attacks. I roamed the world, seeking out ever larger challenges, honing the power of Yanjin alchemy. Even as my authority grew, the possibility that I myself might face defeat was a delicious sensation. By now, of course, there is never any question that I will accomplish the kill. Oh, I just noticed that the the that the background died. Uh, I'll change that out in a minute. Hold on. But I have learned a larger lesson. Slaughtering bodies is merely a road to defeating the soul. Once the soul of a person, a city, a country, a world is defeated, victory is assured. Um, yeah, let me just restart that. Bring it back to the start. There we go. Oh, now it's showing my, uh, my downloads and stuff down there. Let's pop that off. Is it playing? I don't know. That's all right. We're going to keep reading. But these memories are a distraction. They lure me from... Oh, it was going out of the full screen. That's what happened. Well, let me pop the full screen back. If it'll... Well, it's not. Oh, there it goes. But these memories are a distraction. They lure me from my true path. Another act of discipline, and they are gone. Acknowledged and dismissed. I return to a perfect state of readiness. Quiet, empty. I see, smell, hear, and taste nothing. Hey, thanks for following. I begin to focus on the here and now, the immediate. I place myself in space. I believe, according to the primitive Western calendar, that this is the dying season. Autumn. The air is crisp and cool. I am sure there is some foolish name for this day, this time. All that will change. After tonight, this day will always be remembered as the rise of Sinzu. My senses expand. I spread myself out across the city. Its inner movement becomes my breath. Its streets, my blood. I know it intimately. I allow myself to hear two bells toll in the distance. One comes from the magnificent Gotham Cathedral, which looms high above the constructs of the City Hall District. The other, more modest, comes from the Great Clock Tower, a mere two miles from the cathedral. There, across town, a whistle blows. It announces the beginning of the night shift at the Oven Fresh Bakery, 1130. I hear the rhythmic footsteps of various Arkham guards, mine, whose fluids wheeze past arteries, clogged with brittle, hardened fat, will be crossing within view of my cell in 5 minutes and 14 seconds. If he doesn't stop to drink water, relieve his bladder, or try to answer another insipid riddle. An instant is an eternity. I descend back into my receptive state. Once again, I run my plan through mental fingers, as if it were a silken scarf, from major premise to finely woven detail. I return to the words written over 2,000 years ago. The victorious commander must know four things. He must know himself. He must know his enemy. He must know the time of his battle. And he must know the place of his battle. If he knows all of these things, victory is assured. At midnight, the battle will begin. I will launch my first attack, and Gotham City will be valiantly defended. I know myself, I know the time of my battle, I know this place, and, oh yes, 
I know my enemy. <coughs> the Batman, Gotham's general, hunter and jailer of so many souls within this asylum, the ultimate strategist and warrior. From the moment I first read about him in a foreign newspaper, the spirits I serve called me to him. It has been many long years since I have felt such anticipation while developing a battle plan. Like me, the Batman is a creature of darkness, a creature of strategy, but without an equal to defy him, a general is nothing. As I have, as I have written, a great conqueror must have a worthy opponent and a worthy prize. History has proved me History has proved my worthiness in battle. Countries have wept blood as they begged for my mercy. When the time came to choose my next opponent, I knew that it would not be easy to find one deserving of my attention. Had the spirits not guided me to the Batman, I would be searching for one still. Now I am here, er, ensconced in this city, challenging the Batman for Gotham City. Gotham, the Batman's lair. This campaign is treacherous, even for me. The plans for the Batman's undoing have been long in the making. I have deceived the international police forces that think they have me contained. I have calmly accepted my long incarceration at Arkham. All for the love of war. For, as, myse as I myself once wrote, the art of war is deceit. First, you must attack your enemy when he least expects it in a place where he feels strong but is in fact weak and within and with an army he feels he has already vanquished gotham and the batman the womb and the child the father and the son not unlike the symbol i myself wear embossed in the bones of my skull of the yin and the yang two opposing entities encircled together without one the other means nothing in Batman's Gotham, as poisoned as it is, he knows every whimper, every cry. He patrols its streets, winnowing out the criminal and the insane. A general of the night, he believes he controls the darkness. But this night, he is wrong. I listen to the Batman city as a doctor listens to a patient's heart and lungs. As a master knows the movements of his servants. All is normal. Traffic is light. A siren cries in the distance, the occasional horn sounds, but it is nothing like a few hours ago when the masses blared and shrieked in pitched battle to gain yards and minutes in their gasoline-fueled maze. Those are the sounds that are. Likewise, I turn my attention to the sounds that are not. There is no relentless grinding of construction. The big machines are sleeping. The drudgery of petty commerce has ground to a halt in the financial district. Now and again, I hear the distant buzz of an airplane leaving from or arriving at the Goodwin International Airport. But there are fewer now. No helicopters. The sound that isn't tells me that much of Gotham City sleeps. A restless sleep. Gotham feels the fear of every large city. The fear is this. Safety is an illusion. With every hushed breath, the city waits nervously for attack. It fears terrorists, destruction by bomb, virus, or chemical. Ah, uh, talk about destruction by virus. It fears ordinary night terrors of theft and violence brought about by outsiders, or worse, one another. But Gotham City and its dark general both wait for the wrong kind of attack. How could they ever consider, even for a moment, that anyone could conquer it, seize their terrain, and hold it? Not sabotage the board, not skew the dice, but simply claim the game? The great city of Gotham does not yet acknowledge herself as a citizenship under the guard of a military general. She does not know that the force that will conquer her is already seething inside her borders. The Batman does not see my army, massed beneath his very nose, a force of criminals and criminal madmen whom society has stripped from the herd of common humanity and mustered together in its prisons and asylums. Bitter, angry, violent men who wait only for the call of a great commander to transform them into a potent legion. 
an entire army of deviants whom I will let loose to do exactly as they have always wished, to wreak havoc on Gotham City and bring her to her knees, the felons at Stonegate Prison, the violent madmen of Arkham Asylum, those whom the Batman believes he has bested. These are my troops. They feel no love for Gotham. They are in my service now. They await my command. It is the sheer audacity of my objective that ensures success. For months, I have been here at Arkham, Yanjin Alchemy allowing my orders to flow from my mind to the criminal masses, like a satellite broadcasting to a million television sets. How eagerly their crowded, angry thoughts yielded to my own. How hungrily they consumed my mental commands. For the past several weeks, I have been painting in their minds, creating the urge, designing a night of rage, pillage, and chaos. Of course, I cannot command prisoners like disciplined troops, nor will that be necessary. Consider the maxim written hundreds of years before Hannibal or Alexander. Commanding men is like channeling water. As water does not run uphill, men will, do, men will not do those things that are not their inclinations. Water will always flow downhill. The great commander uses the natural tendencies of his troops to his own advantage. Were this a conventional campaign, my choice of legions would be quite foolish. But this campaign is anything but. The prisoners and the mad are my skirmishers, my fodder, cheap, expendable, and able to create a crisis that the forces of the enemy cannot manage. As in an ancient warfare, their jobs to throw dust in the air, distracting and confusing my opposition. Once released from prison, they will spill out into the city like a flood. And as with any flood, one must sometimes let the flow rage as it will. Beyond the grand plan of liberation to release them into the Gotham's tender streets, I did not specify what crimes to commit any more than you would direct a particular drop of water to stay in the center of a river or at the edge. Let them do as they please, so long as they spread chaos and mayhem. The aggregate of all of their actions is what I desire. Think of the termite, ugly and brutish. Each termite possesses a very small brain, and yet in mass, they can destroy cities of staggering size and complexity. Likewise, each criminal, stupid, bestial, and non-directed as he or she may be, will become part of an elaborate structure of chaos. But these petty thieves, larcenists, and murderers are merely a segment of my army. I bring my own elite forces from without, summonable at, the, at a moment's thought. These troops, loyal to me and trained by the spirits, I channel throughout the decades, merely await the word to serve their master. Of these, there are two camps. My mortal ninjas, flawlessly trained in the arts of murder and deceit, and the eternal elite, automatons of Metasua, ancient warriors of stone golems of remarkable power and grace. And two, I have solicited and recruited some of Gotham's own from here in Arkham, captains who bring with them their own troops, of the many potential warriors, of the many within these walls who have faced the Batman, who loathe him and wish for his destruction, I have selected three whose inclinations best serve my objectives. Unfortunately, it will not be possible to release all of Arkham's illustrious costume madmen. In the interest of maintaining control of the field, I cannot afford to subject the flow of battle to the less predictable inmates of this asylum. The chaos I release upon Gotham tonight will be under my control, a broken dam of water that I can at least trust to rush downhill. There are those within these walls who could not even be trusted that far, and so... And so these will become prisoners of war before the battle has even truly begun. I have written, The commander must pick his lieutenants well, both for skill and for loyalty. For once the weapon is forged, it must never be allowed to turn back on, the, on he who wields it. Power must be delegated carefully. The blood of commanders stabbed by their own lieutenants would fill rivers, and many victories have turned to defeat in the hands of unsound lieutenants. For instance, the laughing lunatic known as the Joker and his clownish woman thrall Harlequin are too, diff are too difficult to predict. In, in the case of the thrall, 
I find her to be erratic, even by the standards of lunatics. In the case of the Joker, I find him highly psychotic, even by the standards of Arkham Asylum. He lives for chaos, and if released, could easily turn the tide of battle in any number of undesirable directions. He could end up aiding the Batman, amused by his own creation of irony, or, more likely, engage his own campaign, unleashing the sort of random attacks that could upset my ability to retain his strong this stronghold. He is a variable that no skilled general would set loose in the... In, in the theater of war. There is a difference between applied disorder and absolute pandemonium. The two are mad geniuses, truly, but unsound tools for the waging of war. Even if they manage to fall in line with even if they manage to fall in line with my battle plan initially, they would pose a great threat to me during the final claiming of this territory. My concentration must remain on the Batman during that crucial phase. I cannot afford to be distracted by my own minions. I rejected the notion of using the green-clad man who weaves riddles for similar reasons. His pathological need to present the Batman with clues masks a desire to tell the truth. Curiously enough, though he is a criminal, he is incapable of fulfilling my maxim. All warfare is deceit. As for the plant woman, her reliance on living materials makes her undependable, where there are none at hand. And her wish to be away from the pungent flesh of humanity exceeds her wishes for revenge. Her ability to transform the very landscape of the battle, too, is a factor I cannot risk employing without the utter certainty that she could be controlled. I have had time here to observe her, and it is my opinion as a military strategist that she cannot. But there are many other suitable captains within these walls. Each has his prowess. Each serves his role. I have selected three to launch my attack. Champions of terror, brutality, and rage. They will serve their purpose and sap the Batman of his strength. Separate him from his troops. Challenge the Batman's skills. And force him to play by the rules I dictate. Battle is won and lost when initiative is won or lost. A victory is best achieved when you control the actions of your opponents. I hear footsteps of my guard. The time draws near. I must concentrate. I must send out my message to the inmates of Stonegate, encouraging them to now go forward with the plan I developed for them months ago. I close my eyes and I see them. Not their paltry bodies, but the force of their human energy. They hear me. They are responding. I feel a thousand furtive thoughts, simple thoughts, Brutal thoughts. Their spirits surge and splash against the bars of their cells, waiting for the strike of midnight, when I, the moon to their tide, shall set them free. Back here in Arkham, a guard walks by my own cell. Effortlessly, I gather his mind like one more strand of rope into the cord of thousands I hold in my hands. Though my guard walks normally, he controls neither his arms nor his legs. His face is blank and slack. As he reaches my chamber, I guide his hand to his key, move it to the lock, push and twist. Hear the tumblers move, the lock open. I swing his arm and hear a shrieking of metal. My cell is open. My guard stands outside the door at my command. Hey, thanks for following. Only four minutes to go now. I walk through the rogues gallery. In this higher state, the world shifts to my command. The spirit voices that guide me chant their approval. There is harmony. They are pleased. I pass the laughing man. I turn. He sneers. Something in this cracked being is not quite human. In his own way, he is perhaps a worth as worthy an adversary as the Batman. No matter. Perhaps another time. I activate the Yanjin. I, I project my energy and deflect his. The yin and yang of cosmic balance ebb and flow. The laughing stops. He is frozen in place. Next, the harlequin girl who chirps double entendres. The riddling man, frozen in time and space between question and answer. Now never to solve the last mocking riddle. He shoots at me of the chicken crossing the road. And finally, the two-faced man, who often tells all of them to shut up, is himself silenced. 
I enter the passage that will take me to my hidden stronghold in Arkham. The timepieces of Gotham tick away the last minutes of this day. In a short while, I will hear the bells of the cathedral and the clock tower chime again in the distance and on cue, like an instrument in a symphony, the alarms from Stonegate, and then the gunshots. In mere moments, the night of sin will commence. Gotham will soon be mine. The spirits within me shall be satisfied. The Yonjin itself shall rejoice. Okay, so that's the end of the prologue. And geez, it is a it is a long it is a long prologue. That that's it's wow, it's been forty minutes already. Let me hold on. What do you uh what do y'all got going on in the chat real quick before I start taking notes? Um Fans wanted Vic to be brought into the DCAU for longer than I've been alive. Even if it was only in a quick cameo, it's cool to have those dreams come true. Oh, for sure. It's wild that it's been hidden in a book from 2003. Uh, the band Three Doors Down is now canon. Yes, James. Shouldn't the gameplay footage be looped? Um, can you can you loop a YouTube video? If If I can loop it, then I will absolutely do that. Um, let's see. Oh, shoot. David, David's here. I, I've, I'm leaving the mispronunciation of your last name to, uh, to James because I, I don't want to mispronounce it. Oh, okay. Tight. Yeah. Well, I will loop for the next time around, but let me go ahead and start popping into the um the spreadsheet so that we can do our notes and everything i've had it opened up and it looks like okay there it goes all right there was there was a lot packed into this prologue i don't know where to start um i guess technically we can start with um uh, sinzu was here and it was let's see time it was 11 27 p.m. obviously um let's see we got locations we got gotham city's a location uh let's see um Sinzu suggests no one will know he's the conqueror for hours. Okay, yeah. Uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, I'm sure some of you, you know, are familiar with the spreadsheet but i'm sure some of you are not so i guess let me uh let me explain that to you guys uh, guys girls non-binary folks you know everyone who's here um so essentially when we um when we take notes on things we try to tack it all into this spreadsheet it started as um as a way to you know just get like timeline clues and stuff and then James had the smart idea of, hey, we're trying to build like an online database of like everything DCAU. You should probably also put like other important stuff in there as well. So now it's like a mishmash of just notes of a lot of things. So we've got a appearances, um, which is a, a column for, you know, characters that show up. Locations, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. This objects column, James um, puts a lot of like objects and stuff like anytime like the the lasso of truth shows up uh but he also puts stuff like um you know army tanks and stuff like that and i don't know i don't know where to draw the lines with that um i don't want to you know put every single noun in as an object so I'll, I'll you know stuff that shows up that i think might be important i'll i'll plop in there um continuity slash in show events um 
basically if there's any references to anything we see on screen or anything that like happened in a different comic or something like that uh, that'll show up i guess i could put that this is a novelization of a video game because technically that counts time like any any mentions of time time passing etc 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 um concrete this is where we put stuff that like had a a concrete um like it showed up first in this thing like it was introduced there like how the bat signal is first introduced in the cape and cow conspiracy and batman the animated series but then like we have you know stuff that's like not necessarily introduced like like we wouldn't say the batmobile was first introduced in in on leather wings just because that was the first episode you know um we've got to have like an episode that that clearly introduces it um pop culture that's pretty self-explanatory the weather um other other timeline notes if something just doesn't fit any of that and alternate looks that's like um if 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 someone has a different costume than they normally do um like in the what was it though the wings of war book that we did we got an entirely new look for bane wearing a turtleneck a watch with three buttons having a gun holster on him um and i think james is generally going to try to draw those up um if it's something that doesn't have images with it already and then miscellaneous is just other random trivia um that could be cool to, to have down so we've got senzu we got gotham we got a novelization of a video game um let me see what else uh let's see america's mentioned oh that's appearances locations america good to know that's canon to the dcau um of course we got batman is mentioned usually um usually if like a character is just mentioned then we'll put mentioned next to it uh in like parentheses but batman's obviously going to be coming back throughout this book and i'm not going to like repeat characters every chapter um so you know it, I, i'm just leaving him as is um let's see we get we get like an in in-depth um hey thanks for following uh we get like an in-depth mapping of arkham's location on page two so i'm gonna put that in the the miscellaneous notes um let's see and part of that mapping we got like a um a sewage treatment plant yeah yeah so that's going here um and mercy island is is arkham in the dcau is arkham like i don't i don't think i remember it like necessarily being on an island so that's interesting uh i guess yeah i should probably put arkham asylum as well um let's see where was oh we get mention of the inquisition um i'm gonna put that in the time section because that's like a historical uh thing that was uh i mean technically it's the spanish inquisition no one ever expects it
And then what else do we got? I think I'm getting close to... Oh yeah, so Arkham used to be the Mercy Mansion. We've been we've been talking about doing um, like a history of Arkham video, so I'm glad we read this before ever actually going forward on that because this has a lot. Let me get that sewage treatment plant to all be one line. There we go. Okay. Um, Modern Science, Arkham Asylum, Rogues Gallery. Okay, so past the Divided Man, I'm going to assume that's Two-Face. Oh, I'm putting him in locations. That's not right. Two faces in a place. It's more of a. It's more of a concept. Yeah. Try to put um, secret identities and stuff as well. That way, whenever we're looking for stuff later on, if we're searching, you know, the identity rather than the the the, the character name, then it's uh, we can find both. Um, let's see. So we had the divided man, the plant woman. So that's going to be Poison Ivy slash Pamela Idly. Um, the spindly creature who marks his kills upon his body. So that's Victor Zaz. Now, I think there were, um, I think there, God, how do I spell his name? Let's Google it. I, I should know this by now. There we go. Okay, I was right. There were a couple in this in this that I, I wasn't sure. Let's see. We've got the grunting thing and the crying thing. And the thing too disgusted with itself to utter a sound. Do do any of those three sound familiar to you guys? I'm gonna um I'm gonna finish off this paragraph. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put them in as this, but like, if they, if they sound familiar to you, um, drop in the chat who you think they might be, and then I can be like, oh, that makes sense, and, and change it out, but right now I'm just putting them in with question marks, the grunting thing, the crying thing, the thing too disgusted with itself to make a sound, to utter a sound. And then let's see, ending off that paragraph, we've got uh, the crocodile, so Killer Croc, I guess is in Arkham. Doesn't he usually go to Stonegate? Um, let's see. The Man of Ice, so Mr. Freeze slash Victor Freeze. And then the Puppet Keeper. So that's the Ventriloquist. It's Arnold Wesker. Okay, let me check the chat to see if any of you guys have any clues who, uh, who those three might be. Do I think Senzu and Raz have crossed paths? It's possible. Um, grunting thing could be Grundy? Oh, like salt. Huh. That might be it, but I don't. I don't know. tell you what i will make in the the other notes the miscellaneous 
grunting thing might be Grundy? Question mark. That could be absolutely right, but I don't... I don't know. Make that long enough so Arnold Wesker fits. Okay, there we go. Um, let's see... Then we've got Senzu's guard. And Senzu's dietitian, because he's not eating. And then we have the government worker assigned to his case. Senzu's government worker. Let me capitalize those. I mean, they're not proper nouns, but we're using them to refer to people that we don't know anything about, so why not? Um, okay, yeah, and he says he hasn't eaten in two days let's see and he mentions an American intelligence agents agent that might be his government worker but I'm I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Now we've got more, uh, more Arkham inmates. Down the hall, a madman cackles loudly at his own joke. So there is the Joker. Uh, another voice is raised, and in honeyed tones tells him to shut up I'm that might be Harley I know we get Harley later uh, a third voice promises exquisite torture to them both I I don't know I don't know who that could be I'm not gonna worry about it it's just voices for all I know it could be two-faced yelling at him far down the corridor a man blurts a riddle So we got the Riddler slash Edward Nigma and Harley is Harleen Quinzel. Okay. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Flip of a coin. So that's Two Face again. Man repeats his riddle. Uh, Senzu brags about being able to do the riddles. Let's see. I sink it to myself. The power of Yanjin alchemy. Is Yanjin alchemy like a real thing? Because if it is, let me Google that. Yanjin alchemy. Let me, you know what? Let me just put stuff like that. Let me put maybe in, in pop culture. I'll just come back and check it out later and make sure it's a legit thing. Um, do you say it's ancient? Uh, he goes on about compassion. Let's see, and now we get to the part of the master of meditative art that he kills.
in Chulon. Let's see, he mentions Metasua. I feel like pop culture is not the right place to put these things, but I also, like, I, I don't know where to put them. I guess I could put them in other notes, but I would like to have them kind of separated off. That way I can come back to them later. Um, inhaling the sense of the asylum. Okay, and then he says that he's pretty sure that it's autumn. That's on page seven. And then we get, okay, yeah, he talks about the different parts of Gotham. We've got the Gotham Cathedral. Oh, wait, no, that's in the, putting in the wrong one. Then we've got the City Hall District. Then we've got the clock tower. Um, the oven fresh bakery. And by this time, it's 11.30. Right? Yeah, and that's also on page seven. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. And then he expects his Arkham Guard in five minutes and 13 seconds, or five minutes and 14 seconds. minutes 14 seconds okay he says he returns to words written over 2,000 years ago let me see let me google voice this the victorious commander must know four things. He must know himself, he must know his enemy, he must know the time of his battle, and he must know the place of his battle. Let's see. Nothing comes up from that. Interesting. Um... So I guess that's stuff that was written specifically for the book. I figured it was like passages from Senzu mentions words from over 2,000 years ago. So far, I'm really, um, I'm really digging this book. Um, it seems a lot better written than the uh, like the the young children's novels I've been reading uh, for like Justice League and stuff. Um, let's see. Batman is a creature of darkness. Let's see something that Sinzu's written. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see. We got international police forces are mentioned. Oh, why is it not? There we go. And he mentions his long incarceration in Arkham. Oh. oh, Jesus. I know in other spots. He mentions it's been months. See Gotham and the Batman, and Batman's Gotham as poison, blah, blah, blah. See, we get a mention of the financial district, which that was in, we saw that in Riddler's Reform, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, Goodwin International Airport. Oh no, I'm putting places in the appearances again. I'm goofing up. Mentioned Stonegate Prison. Here it is. For months I have been here at Arkham. There we go. For the past several weeks, I have been painting in their minds, creating the urge. Uh, who painting in whose mind? I'll just put for the past several weeks and page 11. And if I need it later, I will return to it. Consider this maxim written thousands of years before Hannibal or Alexander. That's page 11 as well. And so we've got mentions of Alexander the Great and Hannibal. My mind always goes to either um, Hannibal, Hannibal Buress or Hannibal Lecter, and I know that's not who the historical figure is. Uh, Hannibal. Hannibal is an American thriller series no. that aired from 2013 to 2015 and starred Mads Mikkelsen, Hugh Dancy, and Caroline Davernas. Hmm. Hannibal was a Carth. Okay, so just just Hannibal. Okay, that's fine then. Um. Termites, petty thieves. Let's 
Let's see. Senzu has ninjas. And then there are also the automatons of Metasua. Um, he hints at he hints at um, the the Bane, Clayface, and uh, Scarecrow. Um, he doesn't specifically name them, but he talks about his three generals that he's uh he's got popping off. So you know. We already know who those are because we read the thing about the Marauders. Oh wait, hold on. The those other words um, that were written before Hannibal and Alexander. Commanding men is like channeling water. As water does not run uphill, men will not do those things that are not their inclinations. Nope, I don't see I don't see that either. Um let's see we've got Harley Quinn again, the Joker. The Riddler again. Let's see his guard. He says only four minutes to go now on page 15. So that would put us at it would be what 1131 and a couple seconds oh no hold on okay so the guard just opened his door so in other words, we've passed the five minutes and 14 seconds. So we're at, it's 11.35 p.m. And I guess he's, his plan's set in action at 11.39. See, so he passes the Laughing Man, passes the Harlequin. Clock Terror is mentioned again. Stone Gate's mentioned again. All right, so that's the end of the prologue. And, Jesus, we are already... We're already past the first hour. I know... Let's see. James said that we were going to do the first two chapters. Uh, crying Thing would be the Weeper. He was in an episode of Brave and the Bold. Or could be. Okay. Alternatively, the grunting thing could be the original blockbuster since we already know he exists in the DCAU and mostly speaks in grunts and growls from what I remember. It's a bit of a weak guess, though. Um, Yeah, Sinzu's characterization so far has been great. Um, let's see, the Weeper. So let me let me pop that in the in the miscellaneous. It'd be really interesting if, like, uh, for legacy's purposes, if we could like get these get these characters that we now have from this book that we've never seen and do something with them like in the lost years section um self-loathing inmate mentioned 
before maybe baby doll see i was i was thinking um i was thinking the calendar girl uh for self-loathing but i don't know uh See, Den says he was also thinking about Baby Doll. Is that the bottom of the chat? Yeah, so I know... Um, so James had put this up as we were going to do two chapters today. Uh, the next chapter is another 20 pages. And then the chapter after that is another 25. So I think it might be best just because of how long... Um, how long this was that we just do like one at a time and just kind of like make up for the goof of advertising the first two unless unless you guys want me to keep going for two more pages or two more chapters but i've got um i've got other stuff that i've also got to get done today so i'll uh, i'll leave that to you guys if you guys want more let me know um if not or if, if if you're you're fine with me bringing it back Next week to do the first chapter, we can do that as well. We're also talking about possibly doing uh, the book streams a bit more frequently uh, than once a week. Um, just because like we've got the free time and everything. I just got to figure out planning it all around my college stuff. Because I've got, I've got a college class that I'm taking uh, this quarter as well. That uh, we're gearing up for our first exam now. So I actually need to be studying that. Um compromise go through chapter one and save chapter two for next time yeah i was i was thinking we could do chapter one and save chapter two uh but that's also that's going to be another hour um i think i mean it's 20 pages and so it's it's from the perspective of alfred pennyworth um uh, so maybe maybe it'll be easier to read than sinzu's was but then also it's going to be a lot of note taking. So I don't. Den says he's fine with a chapter a week. Let me, con let me consult with James real quick. Uh, I don't know if he's. I don't know if he is still in the chat or not. Let me hold on. Uh... Oh, okay. He is in the chat. I was about to message him. Okay, so yeah, so we're going to do one chapter a week. Um, the prologue was pretty long. Uh, or one chapter a stream. If we figure out like another day that we can do um, streams as well, then we'll, we'll push it through. Um, I might be able to do something like Saturday, Sunday to make up for not really hitting the, uh, you know, not, not hitting the, the, the two chapters that we said we were going to do today, but I've got stuff to do. Um, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw, uh, on Twitter yesterday, but my, we had to rush my cat back to the ER. Um, he has been having urinary problems, just been having a hard time peeing and like was peeing blood and everything. We took him to the the um the ER and his uh his general vet like 2 weeks ago to get it sorted out. And usually like this is this has been a chronic thing. It usually comes up like once a year, but it's always been fine after we take him to the vet. This time uh here we are 2 weeks later and it's it became an issue again uh so we had to rush him to the er last night um we've got a couple things we got to do with him today uh he ended up when we got up this morning we saw that he passed a stone on top of our stove top so you know yay that's fun and sanitary and not disgusting uh so i'm gonna go ahead get off of here and go take care of him and i'll I know my my college exam is this weekend um it's like a choose your own time to do it kind of thing so if i can figure out getting that taken care of on friday or early saturday or whatever then we can i'll, I'll conspire with james to get uh, another chapter stream up over this weekend sometime um uh, sorry that we're not doing the full two chapters i did not expect the prologue to be this long 
but here we are. Maybe, maybe with the book being written from different characters perspectives for each chapter maybe some chapters will be easier and faster to read through and we'll be able to wing it but for now let's just expect one chapter per stream once again if you're watching on youtube and not on the twitch um twitch is where we're going to be doing this from now on it's going to be it's going to be here youtube was screwing us up when we started doing more live streams once we like like when we were doing the book club over there and started doing the podcast as a live stream and i think we had like another another couple things here and there uh stuff really started to to slow down on that so if you're on youtube and not on twitch go ahead make it a make a twitch account come hang out with us um we're gonna try to try to get another chapter in over the weekend um if not james should be streaming again on tuesday to do i think the next justice league adventures uh also you know videos every sunday on youtube streams over here um so yeah it's been fun thanks for hanging out uh we'll do hopefully we'll do chapter one over the weekend y'all have a good day i gotta go take care of my cat love y'all go kiss your dads for me <laughs>